Live from Massachusetts. Here is your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Silicon Angle TV's on the ground coverage of the VTUG Fall Forward 2014 event, talking to practitioners. Of course, this is a user group conference. Uh, joining me for this segment is Das Sinepin, who's the director of IT for UConn Health Center. Das, uh, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with us. Uh, thank you. Glad to be here. So uh, on the, the CUBE segments, we're always trying to help extract the signal from the noise. In virtualization, uh, th there's really been dominated by VMware uh, in this conversation. You're here uh, talking about uh, your adoption of, of Hyper-V and really the Azure private cloud. First of all, tell us a little bit about your role at UConn and, and your organization in the IT. Sure, I'm the director for uh, UConn Health uh, IT. We, uh, we are a hospital uh, and a medical center in Connecticut, in Farmington. So we were a VMware shop uh, last year. We decided that uh, we cost was driving, just getting way too much with the uh, VMware. So we decided to go to Hyper-V. All right, so, so you say costs. Uh, one of the biggest knocks on Microsoft over the years has been licensing costs. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, w was it just, uh, what was the cost difference from your environment, and uh, what has that transition been uh, been like? So being in education, we definitely get the education pricing, so that became, we already owned the software, so everything we owned in Windows, we had already paid for, so w what better way, it was not a, and it was no brainers, we could just move over and use what we had, so, he, we could now cut off the licensing part from VMware and then use something that they already had. All right, so yeah, one, one of the challenges we always look at inside the VMware environment, it's usually a lot of Microsoft uh, environments, so why not take that wrapper, the hypervisor, and switch that over to Microsoft? That's your environment. So uh, t talk to us a little bit about the project. How long did it take you going over? What was involved in that process? Uh, what lessons did you learn that you would share with your peers? Sure. So we uh, we had an uh, uh, outside consulting company come and help us with the migration. So first job was to see what we had and then what we could move. There was certain applications that we couldn't move because the vendor didn't support them. So we started picking what we could move. And the process, uh, the consulting project was three months old, three months, uh, but we, it, we are still migrating. We had about over 400 uh, VMware servers. We are down to about 170. Uh, so the rest of them are all in uh, Hyper-V. So it's it's a long process. We also we had to bu get buy-ins from our business team so that they would, you know, convert from a. Most people knew who VMware was. Very few people knew what Hyper-V was. And then to make those conversion was the tough part. All right. And how about training? Uh, what what did it undergo? Uh, you know, how much retraining, or is it really just an extension of what people were used to doing in a Microsoft environment? So it was, it was just an extension. That the beauty of Hyper-V was people were already using Windows Server, so there were a few extra clicks here and there that my engineers needed to learn. And uh, the company that we were working with was uh, had hands-on training with us, so that that helped out. All right. Uh, and, and is there any piece that you're going to leave on VMware? Any uh, kind of stragglers there, or do you expect to be 100% Microsoft we, by the end? We will be leaving some stuff on VMware. One is some some very old applications that you know machines systems that will not run on uh, Hyper-V because even the vendor doesn't have support on it and some clinical applications and the vendor is not certified to run on VMware uh, on Hyper-V so we'll have to leave them on. Yeah, I interesting. You would think that since it's Microsoft environment for a lot of them that you would be able to move over. wonder if you could talk a little bit about how cloud fits in the overall discussion. When you talk to Microsoft about Hyper-V, uh, does the broader discussion of Azure come up and being in kind of the healthcare part of uh, IT, what, what, what is the, your, your thought process around cloud? So we have started to talk to uh, our Azure uh, counterparts for Microsoft saying, hey, what are the things that we can do? So this is something that we are beginning because a lot of this, what a lot of our data is clinical data, even though uh, Azure is HIPAA compliant, we have all the BAs signed, but there's still some kind of hesitation for clinical stuff to be moved to Azure. So I think in the in that next couple of years, the people's uh, viewpoint of Azure will change and this is something that we'll move to in a few years. 
Well, Doss, we really appreciate you coming all the way up from the Hartford area where, fortunately, the Patriots are not located here at beautiful Gillette Stadium. Thanks so much for sharing your opinions uh, with the community. Uh, this is Stu Miniman uh, covering uh, lots of the users here at the VTUG Fall, for Fall Forward 2014.